Hey, welcome back in to Pipe Smoking with Colonel Calabash. This is episode three. I want to talk about some things that go all the way back to episode one. We mentioned that we'll be recognizing some of the Facebook pipe clubs and sites, and we had to decide exactly, well, how are we going to pick out which one that we want to recognize on each show? The only thing we could come up was, let's get a box, put the names in it, and we'll draw one out. This seemed to be the most fair way to do it. So we had our little drawing, and this week we are going to recognize the Briar Nation Pipe and Cigar Club. This club has about 4,400 members. A lot of them are military because this site was originated by a member of the military, and so a lot of us are from one of the several military places that we have in the United States and overseas. Now, let me tell you about this site. They're military, and they play a lot of shenanigans. They have a lot of fun on their site. The admins for this group are Jeremy Feliciano, Steve Smith, and Tony Warner. Great bunch of guys and gals belong to this group. And if you were shocked when you heard the word gals, yes, like a lot of pipe groups on Facebook now, we do have the ladies with us, and we are so glad to have them. Today we will uh, be talking about blends of pipe tobacco. Now, we're going to talk about the basis or foundations for pipe tobacco. First one we'll start out with is Virginia. Now, whether it's red, black, dark, lemon, orange, uh, orange, red, Virginia tobacco is the mildest, has the highest sugar content, and I'm talking about natural sugar content, and it is used in virtually all blends as it is a good burner. It does light easily. And it has some of the lightest, sweetest taste and that increases when properly aged before blending the next one we'll cover is brights it's a very light mild tobacco it's uh, grown mostly in the carolinas in fact as far as i know that may be the only place that it is it's got a very mild flavor burley now, Burley is a very popular and well-known tobacco. It has a thicker leaf than the Virginias do. And Burley has a soft, nutty taste that never bites. It also burns slowly, and it's used for slowing down the burn rate for many of the tobaccos. Now, here's one that may throw a little curve. Cavendish. Cavendish tobacco was named after Sir Thomas Cavendish, and it is not a strain of tobacco. It's actually the curing and cutting method. Now, sometimes it's uh, mistaken for a particular kind of tobacco leaf, and although in a way it is, the actual Cavendish is merely the way it's cured and cut. Uh, usually it's a Virginia uh, Cavendish is actually uh, uh, one of the bigger blending tobaccos in a way. It's specially heat treated that brings out the naturally sweet flavor of the Virginia tobacco. Process also creates a tobacco that's quite mild. It's very light in taste and it's easy to pack. Here again, we go on to another tobacco that is not so much a strain of tobacco, but a way that it's cured, and that's the black Cavendish. It's a natural process of heating and curing Virginia tobacco, and here again, it will enhance the sweet flavor of the tobacco. There's a third Cavendish. It's called Navy Cavendish. Navy Cavendish is here again 
aged, but in this case, it is aged with dark Jamaican rum. Now, these are the tobaccos that make up the basis for a lot. In fact, I would even go so far as to say most pipe tobaccos. The next subject we're going to come up with is based, and, and, and I've said this before, a lot of what I say is based on my experience and opinion, and they may be a thousand people listening today and 999 don't agree and one does. But the next subject I'm going to talk about is from experience, and uh, I think I'm pretty correct on that. A lot of people buy pipes off of eBay. Now, certainly there are some new pipes on eBay for sale, but there are a lot of estate pipes. Now, they used to be called used pipes, and if you bought one, it was the same thing as buying a used toothbrush. But now they call them estate pipes. They can be cleaned and sanitized. There are several ways to do it. I, I use a lot of Everclear on mine. Uh, you can use bowl and uh, stem polish. But here's the things you need to look for on eBay pipes. Look at the photos very, very carefully, especially of the bowl and, and the stem area and the inside. Look, look at those photos very carefully. Look for cracks. Look for rough spots. Look for possible burnouts. I almost missed a good deal on a pipe because I thought it had a burnout, but instead of that, uh, the gentleman had laid it in a ashtray that had a cigarette in it, and it did a little burn on the side of it, but I could fix that, and it didn't do any damage to the pipe. Be careful about metal line pipes. Not only should you be careful, you ought to leave them alone because the things are terrible. They're mostly in Chinese pipes, and uh, some of them are uh, nylon pipe bowls with a metal liner, uh, different, different types of outside material for the bowl, but on the inside, they have a metal liner, and there's no way you can keep those things from just getting terribly, terribly hot. Now, there's some good Chinese pipes coming onto the market now, but be careful. Uh, look for ones that uh, are good, they are got good finish to them, and things of that nature. Now, here's one that you really, really need to look at, and, and I almost got involved in a situation on eBay like this. Here's a gorgeous pipe there, name brand pipe as a matter of fact, the starting price on this pipe was 99 cents. Now, I see a lot of pipes, and you do too, where the price starts at 99 cents. This particular pipe was 99 cents by it now. And I thought, well, man, I, that's a bargain there. I think I'll just get that. Then I looked. It had $75 shipping. And this is a trick that some of these people use now. They put a low price on a pipe, and especially on buy it now, but they're going to charge $75, $80 for shipping. So watch that. Be very careful. Check the feedback on the seller. And especially if he sells other items and pipes. You're mostly interested in what his feedback is on pipes. Do not write off a pipe with minor flaws. Sometimes you'll see a pipe that maybe the stem is not the best in the world. You can buy stems. Now, granite stems in price go from about uh, 49 cents up to $20. But if you can get the pipe cheap and all you have to do is replace a stem, then it might be worth it. So don't, don't write it off because it has a minor flaw. You do need to look at the stem, so if it needs replacing, you can tell whether it's worth it. 
Now, here's another place you can find estate pipes, and, and I've found several doing this. That is if you go to yard sales. Uh, every once in a while, you go to a yard sale, and uh, maybe grandfather has passed on, or maybe the dad has decided he's not a smoker anymore. And you can find some very nice pipes in a yard sale. Examine them closely. It's easy to find a pipe laying on the table. It looks nice, and so you grab it up and you pay the $10 for it, and then you get home and you find out, well, the bowl's cracked on this pipe, so I didn't get such a deal after a while. So examine those pipes closely. Next time on the show, we will be talking about condiment tobaccos and what their role is in producing your favorite blend. We'll be saluting another Facebook pipe group and a few other things. Well, that does it for this week, and we appreciate you tuning in. Join us again next week, and you can always find us on YouTube and Facebook. We appreciate the ones that like and the ones that become subscribers on our YouTube channel. One more time, happy pipe smoking.